Hello and welcome to Wise Exotics. I'm your host Trevor and today we're going to be doing an informational resource video for Nepenthes VCI. This is to basically give you general ideas of traits, some of the ones that are available on the market, and you know, give you an idea of what possibly your VCI could have as it grows and develops, things you need to know and or be aware of. Now, VGI are probably one of the most popular pure species in cultivation just because they're very hardy. They make excellent hybrids due to the genetics and adaptability they're in. They are what is called polymorphic, and that basically refers to their ability to change upon their conditions. So if one from my collection got sold to a friend, it could be normal looking in my collection and his become red with stripes, as an example. It can change depending on the conditions, the cold, the light, what you feed it, all these are factors in how it grows and develops. So please keep that in mind. Now, there are several locations that I can name offhand, Malu Basin, uh, Jinji Mulu, Batabui, Batalai, uh, Barrio. Barrio is by far the most common one, so that's what you're most likely gonna get. And within every one of these zones, there are subtypes, and some of these are from protected zones, so they're just a little harder to collect or find. Usually you'll find clones or prevalent ones from tissue culture, individually seedling clone, which means they took a seedling, uh, basically treated it to cr create a, this kind of like bubble callus. They pop the callus and a dozen little tiny clones of that little seedling appear, and they just do that forever in the lab, and that's how they create individual seedling clones. All the seedlings that are from that little pus ball are identical clones, but they're all from a seed grown plant. So there can be variability if they're doing that with multiple, and that's how you get randomly selected clones from tissue culture from their seeds. You can also grow pure seed grown plants in tissue culture, so keep that in mind. But that's a different, it's usually seed grown in tissue culture, not individual seedling clone. <laughs> Now, that being said, uh, even the barrio, which is very prevalent, has a lot of subtypes, and so do the others, but it's easier to give you references for the barrio types. So, a lot of the barrio uh, have been shipped or imported and exported out with various uh, little names or uh, identifiers, as an example, the K. So, right here is a K3, and right over here is a KXK from Exotica Plant. What does that mean? Well, a K is simply referring to the variant of VCI Barrio that this is. Typically, the Ks, as a good example, are stouter. They're a little taller. They can have stripes and flair. This one is one from someone else's collection that I just recently got. Uh, typically, this one is called K3. It is a female. You can look it up. Usually, she's very red with some stripes and this type of stout, tall trap and a little flare. Kind of similar to Cobra. Uh, Cobra is also another VGI barrio. Now, some example Ks that you can readily look at. Uh, if you go to Carnivero's website, they have two Ks that are one of their most prevalent breeders, which is Big Mama, as well as VGI, in quotations, The Wave. Both of those are pure Ks that I believe uh, Drew even stated are from Exotica Plant. And that's just, if you wanted a KXK, you could just get Big Mama, which is a female, crossed with the Wave, which is a male. Now, one of the other prevalent ones that I know people always have questions about are the M Grex. The M's are a little harder to find. They're a little rare. Uh, there is MXM, and there are pure M's from the original uh, batch, but they are another type of barrio. The M. Grex tend to be a lot more squat, little flare uh, with stripes, but one of the things that's noticeably different with that, with the M's versus the K's, is uh, they can actually be almost white, almost pure white in their coloration of the traps. Similar to this uh, one's kind of yellow colored, it's that but way lighter, so it's almost like a porcelain, kind of like Berbigier, but very yellow to white with stripes and squat. I do not have an M or I would show you one as an example. Now, the M. Grex has another weird little trait. Typically, Vichia are epiphytical, but a lot of the barrios are also found in the ground. So what they do is they crawl along the ground from their location, like as an example, this one. This is Vichia Barrio Pink Candy. It basically likes to kind of do this ground crawl waviness. I'm trying to structurally control it with these sticks. I've been having a lot of luck using them. 
uh, for a variety of species, but as an example, how it looks is there's just a stick with a clamp and the clamp goes around the stem. The M. grex is a little more extreme and dramatic in how it comes off. So this one just kind of will slightly curve off here and then kind of crawl along. The M will literally come out and then drop and then fall to the floor and then crawl rapidly along the floor. So that's one weird oddity that the M's like to do. As an example, in comparison with the K's, the K's tend to get these wavy leaves. Now, when the K get the wavy leaf, that primarily means you need to not give them as much water. They like to dry out a little more at that stage, so keep that in mind. There's not a lot of other little differences. I know that a lot of the barrios can also have uh, speckling, which is a type of variegation along the leaves. That's another reason why the VCI bear are, were also given the nickname of the spotted VCI. Um, a quick example of this it can be seen on some of the hybrids where they get these little black, kind of looks like someone takes spray paint and just, you know, you get the splatter effect on the outer edge. But even some of them get it way later in life, like this one only gets a few. Um, but it is another type of speculant variegation. Uh, some of the lowland species get them as well just as an example. It's basically a type of red pigment that goes awry when developing, but it's a neat little trait, and if yours gets it, that's just another cool little factor. Um, one of the other little neat tricks you can see is they get these spots even along the side, and these can even grow along the wings of the plant. Various type of VCIs. This is more of a kind of example of how some M's might look. This is not in fact an M to my understanding, but you can see the little speckles along the wings right here and how squat it is. That's more typical of a M Grex, but it's just something you should know. So I hope this video is helpful for those of you wondering what some of the traits can be or things you might need to think about when growing VGI. Typically, VGI from any of the zones can grow in anyone's collections. They're extremely hardy. Just make sure you give them a little bit of a night drop. You know, give them good uh, nutrition. Something with iron and magnesium is very helpful. And they do like a lot of bright light, as you can see here. So keep that in mind. And best regards, Jeffrey out. Until next time.